Okay, so hello everyone. In this lecture, we'll try to start with options contract, which is the second part of derivatives analysis and valuation. Options contract, it is a little bit complicated than futures because futures is very straightforward. In options, it is a little bit complicated. Initially, I'll try to go slow make you understand what is options try to also link this with the, the practical stock market world it might take you around one to one and a half hour to get adjusted to what are the basics of options so you need to have some patience listen to me carefully because this is one of the most important lecture to understand options because without understanding options you are going to lose roughly around 10 to 12 marks in the examination because one question from options is for sure one question from futures is for sure. So not wasting much of your time, let us now quickly jump into the concepts of options. So we have completed the entire futures, that is the first part. Futures contract was the first part. Now let us move into the part 2, that is the options contract. Right? Now let us move into the part 2, that is the options contract. Option is a derivative contract which provides right to buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price called strike price or exercise price. Now, if you remember what we have learnt in futures, the same thing has been given here, buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price. Now that predetermined price is called as either strike price or exercise price. Guys, I will let you know these two are the most important terms to be understood here for a predetermined period. So here also predetermined period it might be say one month, two month, three month etc. Right? So one or two month max to max generally for shares the maximum period which you can deal in options will be three months. But for index, for nifty options and for nifty bank, bank nifty options we do have almost 12 months options contract. I will show you all of that don't worry. Yeah, I'll, I'll link everything practically. So just need to have some patience. Listen to me carefully. No distractions whatsoever. In between, even if you are losing the link, do not just get struck on that link. Move forward. Listen to me carefully. Do not get distracted. Okay. Now, there are two parties of options contract. There are two parties of options contract. One is option buyer. The other one is option seller, right? So, very similar to what we have seen in futures till now. The option buyer will say pay something called as option premium, will pay something called as option premium, and the option seller will receive the option premium, will receive the option premium. Option buyer has the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying asset option seller has an obligation so buyers are having right sellers are having obligation buyers will pay premium sellers will receive premium unlimited profit and limited loss oh wow so buyer enjoys unlimited profit but loss is limited what a great deal right profit is unlimited but loss is limited unlimited loss and limited profit unlimited loss but limited profit why will someone go and sell options that is the first doubt which you are getting right loss is limited etc etc so now let us try to understand with the help of my storybook as you all know storybook is one of my best products to understand anything with the help of a story right so now let us try to understand this options contract right so understanding call options there are two types of options, call options, the other one is put option. First, let us try to understand what is a call option. I have just taken a story. I hope you all know who are these players. The person in the left is uh, Virendra Shevog and the person in the right is your Rahul Dravid. Okay. So now, let us try to understand this story. 
this virendra or this person called virendra shevag he is a gambler he is a gambler he will be generally a buyer of call option now this person that is rahul dravid he is a safe player player he will be willing to become a seller of call option now let us first try to understand what is the mindset of shevag and what is the mindset of dravid before that i would like to tell you that this is uh, this is an example of mrf shares as you all know mrf is one of the costliest share in the indian stock market somewhere roughly around 65000 rupees per share you need to pay 65000 rupees mrf company current share price as on 1st of april 2020 is rupees 65000 per share so as on 1st of april 2020 MRF current share price is sixty-five thousand. Lot size, so minimum number of shares in one futures contract. In one futures contract, you need to either buy or you need to either sell minimum number of shares. Same way, even in options, we have minimum number of shares, which is known as lot size. So in one lot, you will be getting ten shares for futures and options. If you want, I can also show you practically. if mrf is having 10 shares in its lot also possible just go into this website called nse india www.nseindia.com click on the equity derivatives type in mrf right type in mrf here you might find here that is the lot size is 10 shares so minimum number of shares you need to buy or sell in one futures contract or in one options contract is 10 right so roughly the total contract value will come to 62920 which is the 27th august expiry date futures contract as you all know there will be three expiry dates right there will be three expiry dates i will just like to take stock options here click on stock options mrf okay right now there is only two months expiry but generally there should have been 3 months i don't know because of some error in the website probably they are not showing you the third month option now how are these dates been calculated these dates are calculated based on the last thursday of every month so last thursday of august is 27 that is why you can see the expiry date is also 27 same way if you go for september last thursday is 24 that is why if you can see here in the options you will find 24th of september as the expiry date of september so stock options mrf expiry date option type there are two types of options one is call option the other one is put option strike price you can decide i will come back to the strike price later but as of now let us just take strike price of 62500 and get data okay probably this is not showing us the exact figures instead of mrf if you can uh, take any other shares because M mrf derivatives are not frequently traded i would just like to take uh, let us say okay i'll just like to refresh this because earlier we we did have the data on mrf okay fine So I'm not changing the company. The same company. Let's try to understand. So sixty-two thousand nine twenty is the strike price. Now, exercise price of rupees sixty-five thousand for three months option. So we have selected exercise price of sixty-five thousand. Okay. Now, what is this person Shevag wanting? I feel share price of MRF will go up soon. So what is he thinking? The share price of MRF will go up. in case mrf share price goes up i want to make profit so he wants to make profit if the mrf share price goes up because his expectation expectation is that mrf share price will go up okay but if mrf share price doesn't go up if it doesn't go up or if it falls i don't want to pay any money right so how good a agreement or how good are the terms and conditions if the mrf share price goes up he wants to make profit if the mrf price comes down he don't wants to make loss now this person is called as a buyer of call option let us now try to understand what is dravid telling 
I don't feel share price of MRF will go up. So Dravid is thinking that MRF share price will not go up. Already it is at 65,000. Now from now onwards it will only try to come down. So it will only fall is what Dravid is telling. Okay, Shavag, I am ready for your terms and conditions. So is now ready for the terms and conditions of Shavag. If MRF goes up, I will pay you and it doesn't go up. You need to, you need not pay me anything in return. So everything is sorted. Shavag wants to get money or get profit if MRF share price goes up. And if it goes down, he doesn't want to pay any money. And Dravid has also accepted his terms and conditions. But now, but since I am taking high risk, you will have to pay me some premium of 1000 rupees per share in return. So what is his condition? I am taking risk because I cannot make unlimited profit. I am only going to make limited profit of this 1000 rupees. So this contract is similar to a insurance company's contract. Where insurance companies, what, it, what does it tell? You pay me premium. In case of any mishappenings, we will reimburse you your medical expenses, etc. etc. That is the similar circumstance which is happening here. Dravid is asking 1000 rupees per share. Uh, in the form of what? In the form of premium. I hope you understood this particular story, what is going on till now. Shevog wants to get money or get profit if the share price goes up. If the share price comes down, he will not pay any money. But today he has to pay this thousand rupees of premium which Dravid has demanded from him. Because Dravid is obviously taking high risk, right? Dravid, if the share price is going up, he will pay Shevog. If the share price is coming down, he will not receive anything from Shevog. So that means he is having higher risk. Because of that, he will demand for a premium. Done. So he's going to he's going to demand for a premium of thousand. Let's just understand with the help of thousand rupees in this particular example. So point two has been discussed. The same way, National Stock Exchange or Bombay Stock Exchange, wherever you are entering into the futures contract, shall receive premium money from Shevag to buy call option. So who will receive premium? National Stock Exchange will receive premium from whom? Shevog. And NSE shall pay money to Dravid. Right? So, from Shevog they will receive what? Premium. And to Dravid they will pay what? They will pay premium money. But, now, but NSE also receives margin money from Dravid in case he incurs loss. Now, NSE did not receive any margin money from Shevo. Then why did they receive margin money from Dravid? That is a million dollar question, right? We will try to understand this. Can I tell for Shevo, the maximum amount of loss will be this premium paid to Dravid. Apart from that, he will never have any loss. He is never going to have any loss. Why? Because even if the share price is coming down, he is not going to pay anything. And if the share price is going up, he will receive money from Dravid. So can I tell, Shevog has limited loss and that limited loss is only this 1000 rupees of premium. So once this 1000 rupees of premium is paid by Shevog, he is not bothered about this options contract. That is a leisure or that is the freedom which he gets in this options contract if someone is the buyer of call option. But for a seller of call option, they will receive premium today, but they will have to deposit margin. Why? Because if tomorrow the 65,000 rupees, it rises up to say 75,000. Can I tell Ravid has to pay share of 10,000 rupees per share? 10,000 rupees per share into 10 shares means 1 lakh rupees. Ravid has to pay. So if Ravid has, has unlimited loss capability, then can I tell National Stock Exchange will also receive some margin money from Dravid? Because what happens if Dravid is running away from the country like Vijay Malya, right? So we need to have or the National Stock Exchange needs to have some margin money from Dravid. Under futures contract, both the buyer and the seller used to pay the same amount of margin money. 
in futures contract there was no concept of premium receivable premium payable no there was only margin money receivable or oh sorry margin money payable by buyer and margin money payable by seller so both used to pay margin money but in the options contract it is only the option seller who is paying what margin money right so this is the concept that is step number 3 now let us go to step number 4 maximum loss is limited to premium paid of 1000 rupees as i have already discussed maximum gain is unlimited right maximum gain is unlimited okay maximum loss to dravid shall be unlimited and profits are limited to premium received that is maximum loss can be unlimited but profits are received limited to premium received of rupees 1000 by him okay now coming back to fifth point and the last point let us assume price as on 30th of june today it was 1st of april so they have gone for three months contract three months contract that is as on 30th of june 2020 the price turned out to be around 70000 first probability second chance let us say 60000 or the third alternative let us say 65000 that it is neither going up nor coming down this is the scenario sevog he will gain how much 5000 rupees minus the premium how much 1000 if the price it has moved from 65000 to 70000 how much did sevog gain he gained 5000 rupees and how much did dravid lose dravid lost 5000 rupees but can i tell to enter into this contract sevog has already paid 1000 rupees of premium so on a whole net profit net profit for sevog is not 5000 it is going to be only 4000 same way net loss for dravid will not be 5000 it will only be 4000 because already he has received 1000 rupees of premium right rupees 60000 no loss for sevog right but premium paid of 1000 rupees is lost dravid gains 1000 rupees of premium so can i tell maximum gain for dravid is 1000 maximum loss for shevog is 1000 right if the price remains 65000 itself then in that case no loss but premium of 1000 rupees lost same way gain of premium of 1000 rupees done so this is all about the story about call option give me a thumbs up if you are able to understand just give me a thumbs up. I have already seen what you have replied in the group. I will make sure that I am providing you with a soft copy of futures questions and solution. Don't worry, I will be doing it once this session is over. But were you able to understand this contract of options contract? Uh, that is your between Shevog and Dravid. Thank you, thank you. So this is all hap what all happens in the call option. Again, I will try to summarize. The buyer of call option has the right to buy but not obligation. What does that mean? If the share price goes to 60,000, can, can Shevak tell that, see, I don't want to buy at 60,000. Sorry, I don't want to buy at 65,000. See, the, they have fixed the price of 65,000. That is, Sevog has told Dravid that no matter what is the price, I will be buying the share at 65,000. And Dravid has also agreed that no matter what is the price, I will be willing the I will be willing to sell the share at 65,000. Now, as on expiry date, in the physical market, one share is available for 60,000 itself. If one share is available for 60,000 in the physical market, why will Shevog go and buy it at 65,000 from Dravid? Right? He will never go and buy at 65,000 from Dravid. Because in the physical market, he can, he can buy it at 60,000 itself. That is why I told you that Shevog has the right to buy, not the obligation. He has the right to buy. To get this right, what he has paid in return, to buy this right, to buy the right what he has paid in return he has paid premium to dravid but let us say in the physical market 
one share is available for 70,000. Chevag has agreed to buy from Dravid at 65,000 65, 3 months ago. So can I tell now, Chevag will utilize his right to buy at 65,000. Can Dravid tell him that, no, I will not sell it to you, sell to you at 65,000, no. Can Dravid inform Shevak that I will not be able to sell you at 65,000, can he do that? No, he cannot do that, right? But we didn't consider the margin money paid by Shevak while calculating profit or loss. But we didn't, margin money, see, okay, I'll come back to that later. Just wait a little bit, Kamachi. Here, what I am trying to tell is, if the price is going up to 70,000, Dravid cannot ignore that because he is having an obligation. He is having an obligation to sell to Shevog at this price of 65,000. At the price of 65,000. So, Dravid has the obligation, Shevog has the right. Right? So, whenever Shevog wants to exercise his right at 70,000, what did I tell? Whenever Shevak wants to exercise his right at 70,000, Dravid cannot ignore it. Dravid has the obligation to sell to Shevak at 65,000 because they already agreed at 65,000 of strike price. Now, coming back to the margin money. Sir, what happens to the margin money Dravid has paid? Let us assume the margin money came to roughly around 1 lakh. For our simplicity sake, let us assume he has paid a margin money of 1 lakh. Now, whenever Dravid has paid margin money of 1 lakh, it will be there with the National Stock Exchange. First case, if the price went up to 70,000, how much is the loss of Dravid? 5,000 is a loss. So, 5,000 National Stock Exchange will deduct or will debit from Dravid account. They will credit it to Shevog account. Because Shevog won this race or won this battle between uh, Shevog and Dravid. That is why 5000 will be credited to Shevog account. 95000 is now available in the Dravid's margin account. This will be given back to Dravid along with 1000 of premium, which was earlier deposited into Dravid's margin account or let's say trading account initially. So, 1 lakh when Dravid deposited as margin money, initially 1000 was already credited to Dravid. How did they credit that? By getting it from Shevak. So, Shevak will pay 1000, Dravid will receive 1000. Margin money, he deposited 1 lakh rupees. Yeah, 1 lakh, this is 1 lakh, okay, just try to understand. 5000 was the loss from that 1 lakh. 5000 was the loss. So, remaining 95,000, Dravid can take it off once the contract expires. Once the contract expires, remaining 95,000, Dravid can take home. As simple as that. 95,000 along with this 1000 rupees of premium, that is totally he can take home how much? 96,000. And, Shevog, earlier he paid 1000, so minus 1000. Now, he has received how much? 5000. So, 5000 minus 1000 means he has received how much? 4000. He has received how much? 4000. So, now what happens if the share price is 60,000? If the share price comes down to 60,000, first of all, he will never exercise to buy at 65,000. He will never exercise because in the market it is available at 60,000. Why will he exercise his right to buy at 65,000 and make additional 5000 loss? No one will do that, right? So, what will happen? Shevog will lapse this contract. He will lapse. And out of the buyer and seller, only the buyer has the right to either exercise or lapse the contract. Only he has. Dravid can never exercise or lapse the contract. If he exercises, he has the obligation to sell him. If he doesn't exercise, then Dravid will be quiet. He cannot do anything. It is like you have taken a mediclaim from insurance company. You paid a mediclaim premium of let's say 15,000 rupees per annum. Let's say 15,000 rupees per annum. Now, 
in case you are getting hospitalized the bill is coming to 50000 right so can i tell now you are having the right to go and reimburse the, this bill of 50000 from the insurance company right insurance company cannot tell that see our employee is got hospitalized now we will again charge you charge more from you insurance premium no insurance company is just a silent player they will only receive premium the actions has to be done only by the buyer of call option yeah any other doubts and also let me know if your earlier doubt was cleared please do let me know if your earlier doubt was cleared so this is all about call option this is the story of call option Any other doubts do let me know please rest of them you can also reply right so this is all about mrf now now comes the more trickier part understanding put option see till now i've just made you explain or i've just explained you basics of call option practical reality is lot more different right it's lot more different understanding put option Again, I have taken a different example. As you all know, these are the two most popular uh, cricket players right now in the Indian cricket history. One is your Virat Kohli, the other one is your Tony. So, obviously, you know who is more safe and uh, who is more aggressive or who is a gambler, right? So, in this uh, example, I have considered Virat Kohli as the buyer of put option and uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni as the seller of put option. Sir, why is he called a safe player? Why is Dravid and uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni being called a safe player? Now, whenever you get all these doubts, just imagine insurance company and the policy holder. Who do you think earns money? Policy holder earns money or insurance company? Yeah, at the end of the year, if you always go and look at the balance sheet of insurance company, generally they will have profits. If an insurance company is getting loss, why will it enter into such a contract yeah out of 100 policy holders let us assume only 10 of them will get their mediclaim reimbursed the 90 90 rest of the 90 policy holders the premium received is a bonus so generally a battle between policy holder and the insurance company who will have profit insurance company right okay extremely sorry there's some irritation i don't know I need to get consultation from the doctor that is why I have been doing like this either my uh, skin has become a little dry that is why I have been doing like that it was it is not a usual habit of mine I hope you understand now I just don't want to go and consult a doctor in this pandemic yeah so that is the reason I have been staying at home not going to consult a doctor but I hope I will be soon going to a doctor because uh, my entire skin is becoming dry every lecture whenever I am whenever I'm coming in front of you because of the AC also. Okay, not bothering all of that. Let us now continue the next understanding of put options. Right, understanding of put options. What is all about it? Okay, so Virat Kohli, what is his story right now? I feel share price of KGF. Now, what is KGF? Don't tell me it's a movie. KGF is nothing but Kingfisher. Price of KGF will go down soon. He's from RCB, and you all know who is the franchise owner of RCB? It's the Kingfisher. In case KGF share price goes down, I want to make profit. If KGF's price does KGF price doesn't go down or if it goes up, I don't want to pay any money. So his expectation is exactly opposite of Sheva. Sheva wanted to make money if the price increases. Virat Kohli wants to make money if the price decreases. Sheva wanted to not pay any money if the price decreases, but he wants to not pay any money if the price increases. 
then i hope you get you are getting this particular story i don't feel share price of kgf will go down so dhoni is still thinking that okay no kgf i still believe vijay malya he will come back to india hence share price of kgf will not go down it will only go up okay virat i am ready for your terms and condition if kgf kgf goes down i will pay you and if it doesn't go down you need not pay me anything in return but since i am taking high risk you have to pay me some premium of 100 rupees per share in return sir why only 100 rupees because kgf share price is not as high as mrf it is only 500 rupees per share it is only 500 rupees per share so for just for an example i have taken 100 round and off lot size of kgf is 1000 shares for futures and options so one lot is now how much 1000 shares mrf one lot was only 10 shares and i'm in mrf one lot of only was only 10 shares national stock exchange shall receive premium money from virat to buy call okay so probably i have made a mistake here it should have been to buy put option right to buy put option buy put option receive premium who nsc will receive premium same way uh nsc shall pay premium money to dhoni but nsc also receives what margin money from dhoni in case he incurs loss the same story yeah, it's just the opposite is that's the reverse of what we have already learned so maximum loss for virat is how much 100 rupees of premium paid right Per share it is hundred. For thousand shares it will be one lakh. Hey, this hundred is not for thousand shares. This is for per share. Same way earlier or what also it was per share. Okay, so he will have to pay a total premium of one lakh. This is just for understanding base. Uh, base generally one lakh. Uh, no one pays one lakh of premium. I will show you all of that practically. Then only you will be able to understand. he will receive this 1 lakh of premium and let's say margin money he will have to pay around uh, 1.5 lakhs price as on 30th of june 2020 if it is going to 700 if it is going to 500 if it is going to 400 no loss but premium rupees 100 per share is lost if the share price is going to 700 no loss for him because see what he told i want to get money if the share price decreases i will not pay any money if the share price increases here the share price increased but he will not exercise why will he go and sell it at 500 rupees why will virat kohli go and sell it at 500 rupees to dhoni when the market price is 700 he can sell in the market at 700 then why will he go and sell it for 500 rupees to dhoni that is why he will lapse he will lapse this contract but the premium of rupees 100 payable is the premium lost for dhoni he gains premium of rupees 100 per share if the share price is 500 no loss but premium of rupees 100 is lost gain gains premium of rupees 100 if the share price is going to 400 he will now exercise right he will now exercise because if he exercise he can sell to dhoni at rupees 500 market if he goes he can sell it only for 400 but to dhoni he can sell it for 500 so if he exercise at 500 gains rupees 100 but premium of also 100 rupees is lost right so no loss no profit case so what are you able to understand only if the share price goes down below 400 below 400 then only virat kohli will gain so from 500 to 400 He is only reimbursing the premium already paid. Let us say if the share price comes down to four fifty. If the share price comes down to four fifty, can you all tell me will Virat exercise or lapse? Will Virat Kohli exercise his put option if the share price goes to four fifty, or will he lapse the put option? Tell me fast.
the share price goal comes down to 450 will he exercise his put option or lapse his put option what will happen so not knowing just tell me so we don't know as simple as that Come on, fast. So, 400 if it is going or 450, I don't know. Maybe he will exercise. Rest of them, yeah. What happened to rest of them? Reply fast. We don't have all the time. Lamps. Okay. The answer is, now he can sell to Dhoni at 500, right? He can sell to Dhoni at 500. If the price is coming to 450, why will he lapse? He has already paid a premium of 100. At least by selling at 500, when the price is 450, see what he can do now. He can sell at 500, buy at 450, sell at 500. So, can I tell he will make a 50 rupees of gain? 50 rupees of gain he has made, but already he has paid how much of premium? 100 rupees. So, his premium paid was 100 rupees, but now 50 rupees of gain. So, net loss comes down to 50 rupees. If he is lapsing, the premium paid of 100 rupees is gone. You cannot go and collect it back from insurance company. Can you ever do that? No. 100 rupees of loss. Instead, he can just try to reduce his loss to 50 rupees, right? That is why he will exercise this option. Though the net is going to be loss, but instead of 100 rupees loss, now his loss will only be 50 rupees. I hope you got this point. So, this was one of the most trickiest thing to be explained in SFM, the entire SFM, options is one of the most trickiest things to understand. I hope you got the clarity of call option and put option. Don't worry, there is a lot more things to be explained in call option and put option. This is just the basics with the help of this storybook. I have tried to explain you everything, right? So, that was all about laps, exercise, both. Okay, great. Fine. So, I hope you have understood. What is put option? You understood what is call option. These were the basics. Now, if you read through this, you will understand everything. You will understand everything once you are reading through this. <clears throat> okay the next one types of options all of this i have just now explained i will just read it once so that you will be able to understand even from your side contract which provides right to holder of option to buy so it, call option it provides a right to holder who is holder holder is nothing but buyer It will give a right to buy. Under put option, the holder gets the option to sell or right to sell, whatever the case is. So, it will give a right to buy here, give a right to sell here. Who is the writer? Writer is your seller. Writer is your seller. So, however, seller of call option that is opposite party has obligation to sell. This is nothing but Dravid. Dravid had the obligation to sell. This is nothing but Shevog. Here we saw the example of Virat. And obligation to buy is your Dhoni. Right. So I hope you are now comfortable with call option and put option. Before, because before understanding the story, if you had gone through this, you would have never understood what is a call option and what is a put option. So that is the magic of our storybook. Right. Two parties are there, call option buyer, call option seller. Two parties for put option, put option buyer, put option seller. 
So totally how many parties are there in call and put option or how many parties are there in options contract? 4. How many parties were there in futures contract? 2. Buyer and seller, that's it. But here we are having 4 persons involved in options. Call option buyer, call option seller. Okay, but this is a separate contract. This is a separate contract. Okay, so call option buyer, call option seller. Put option buyer, put option seller. This was the general understanding of types of options based on rights and obligation. Now let us understand types of options based on time of exercising option. So, 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 so the time of exercising options let us try to understand now. On maturity date, European option, if option can be exercised only at expiry date. What did we see in the futures contract? Akash, when he gained the profit of 90,000, he came out of the contract, right? But in options, there are two types of contract. One is European contract, the other one is American contract. Under European contract, you can come out of this contract only on the expiry date. In Indian stock market, generally options are European and not American. So, in India, if you want to exercise or lapse, if you want to exercise or lapse the options contract, you will have to wait till 31st of March, till 30th of June, till 27th of August, till 29th of September, till 31st of Oct October, whatever is the expiry date. You have to wait till then to either exercise or lapse options contract. You cannot exercise or lapse before the expiry date under European contracts. And in India, all the options contract are European. American options. If option can be exercised at any time on or before expiry date, then it is called as American. So, in American option, the buyer of option in European in American cannot exercise or lapse can exercise or lapse before expiry date before expired. I hope you got this understanding of what is European contracts, what is American contracts and in India what is prevalent. See these are all theoretical, I will tell you what happens practically also. You need to have some patience because options is one of the trickiest concepts to be ever explained. Generally, when I was in my final, I never understood options practically. But I will try my best to make you understand practical aspects of options. Don't worry. Premium charge by seller of American options may be greater than European options. Why? Why is the premium charge by seller of American options going to be greater than premium charge by European option seller? Why? Because in European option, the buyer can exercise or lapse only on the expiry date. But in American option, the buyer can exercise or lapse even before the expiry date. So, can I tell American option buyers are having an added advantage to set off, to square off even before the expiry date or even on the expiry date. Hence, who is at more risk? American option seller is at more risk when compared to European option seller. American option feels more risk than European option unless otherwise stated all options are assumed to be European option. So, in our syllabus generally they will ask you questions only from European options because even in India we are having only European options. What is European option? European option means you can exercise or lapse only on the expiry date not before that.
can you all give me a thumbs up if the basics of options are clear for you are you having any doubts regarding the as uh, the, you know conceptual aspects of options call option put option etc if you are having any doubts i am ready to solve i don't know in this lecture i am feeling a little bit unwell i am not at the best of my performance today but i will try my best to hold on till 3 hours if it is possible or we will try to cut 2 hour session 2 hour session try to do that if it is possible for me right now a little bit of uh, <clears throat> okay thank you next we will try to understand status of the option in the money option at the money option out of the money option let me first try to explain you what is in the money in the money means positive cash flows if exercised immediately to understand this first let me take you to the practical aspects of options our website that is nse india just go to this click on equity derivatives instead of mrf i would like to take some other uh, derivatives let's say itc let us take itc because that is very easy to for me to understand or even for you to understand that i've opened itc here if you can see something called as option chain here just click on that option chain once you have clicked on this you will find this particular sheet first let me try to explain you status of option under call option then i'll try to explain you state of, of, of option under put option call option this side you will find put option call option if you can see here the strike price it starts from 120 almost 120 okay and it keeps on going like this now if you are just taking it without understanding all these you will be blank it goes on till 230 it goes on till 230 what is the current market price of itc have they given you that yes they have given underlying stock what is underlying stock for itc options itc options is the derivative contract for this itc options a hey, how does the itc options value move yeah based on the underlying stock which is your itc share price itc share price right now is 196 right uh, so this you can see the date 196 is the itc share price now coming down you want to buy a call option you want to buy a call option that means let us say you want to buy a call option not at 196 you want to buy a call option at 190 how much 190 sir what are you telling sir is that possible Yes, it is possible, dear. You just go to 190 strike price, which is here, okay, and click on this. 190 you want to buy. So, what does that mean? Right now, the market price itself is 196. You want to enter into a contract to buy at 190 after 3 months. Or, see, there are two people. Let us say one is uh, Bonesh, other one is, or let us say one is Kamakchi, another one is Sangeeta. So, Kamachi, you want to buy at 190. You want to buy at 190. Sangeeta, you want to buy at 200. Current price is 196. There is, I will just go to one more option that is 200. I will open this. Now, if you see here, this LTP is there, right? This LTP is the last traded price or last the full form of LTP is last traded price, but for our better understanding, we will just assume last traded premium. Okay. For 27th of August expiry date, last traded premium of 4.10. For which strike price? 
for which strike price this is the strike price of one second yeah this is the strike price of 200 the strike price of 200 so sangeeta if you want to buy itc options after 3 months you will have to pay how much 200 rupees sorry you have to pay how much of premium 4.15 rupees if the expiry date you are choosing is for august and 8.40 if the expiry date is september why is this doubling because of the time value of money right because of time value of money the same strike price the same itc order options why is the premium payable for 24th of september higher than the premium payable for 27th of august okay sorry i think i have uh, taken ask price it is 7.90 and 4.10 now let us go to kamachi's uh, uh, or kamachi whatever is the exact pronunciation we will go for your particular trade you want to buy options at 190 rupees current market price is 196 so can i tell you are already in an added advantage if you want to go into the market you will have to pay 196 you want to enjoy the right to buy at 190 after three months or let's say this month that is 27th of august or let us also tell 24th of september whatever the case is you want to buy it at how much 190 can I tell if you are if you want to buy at 190 you are already at an added advantage because in market it is if you want to buy from the market you have to pay 196 so in that case if you can see here your last traded price is not 4.10 it is 9.15 and 13.05 so that means if you are a call option buyer if you are a call option buyer your strike price ranges from 130 or sorry 120 you can even be buying at 120 but you can imagine there is no person who wants to sell at 130 that is why all these are nil see you will be buying at you might be buying at 120 but no one is there to sell at 120 so sellers they try to or they come only from this particular price or let us say even here there are not many sellers here i can see a lot of sellers so this price is of 180 i'll make you understand this you want to buy call option you want to buy at 180 itself current market price is 196 you want to buy as on 27th of august at 180 that means can i tell you are already in the added advantage if you are a buyer of call option and think from the seller point of view a seller of call option he will have to sell to you at 180 no matter what is the price on 27th of august he is at a huge disadvantage so can i tell he will obviously charge more premium from you here the premium is 18.10 sorry if it is 18.10 or 30 okay 18.10 the premium is 18.10 and as the strike price increases as the strike price increases you might see that the premium decreases and for a strike price of 230 the premium payable is only 0.25 let me try to explain you with the help of a practical example you are 70 years old you are 70 years old you want to get a mediclaim you want to get a mediclaim from insurance company will insurance company charge high premium from you or low premium from you obviously high premium from you you are already 70 years old any day you can get and go you can go hospitalized now you are only 25 year old you are all healthy you have no bad habits or uh, yeah you are not into any trouble no diseases no past history of medications etc if you are going and approaching insurance company can i tell he will ask a lesser premium to be payable from you lesser premium will be charged from you if you are a healthy person the same thing goes with the options also you want to buy at 180 itself market price is 196 option seller will ask or demand from you more premium you want to buy at 230 market price itself is 196 option seller will tell you that okay you just pay me even 0.25 rupees of premium because only if the share price is going above 230 buyer will be able to get profit so which is almost 
very difficult because right now the, prof, the price is only 196. But by chance, if in the next three months, let us just assume three month contract, in the next three months, if it is going to 250 rupees, right, then who gains? Buyer gains how many rupees? 20 rupees he gains and he paid a premium of how much? Only 0.25. So on a net he has gained 19.75 rupees if the share price goes up to 250 in the next three months. Now I hope you have uh, follow, been following me uh, for the past half an hour because this was one of the most uh, difficult kind of concepts to be understood but once understood it becomes very easy and I am trying my best to make you understand practically. I am not trying just uh, keeping the book aside and reading from that no. Okay, so did you first understand why is the premium last traded price or premium is high for 190 strike price and it is why is it low for 200 strike price? Can you did you understand that particular thing for call options? Because once you are understanding from call option to convert it for put option it will become very easy. But first you need to understand for call option. Okay, thank you. Now coming back to this. If you can see here all these yellow colored after a point of time it becomes white colored. Yeah, from here it becomes white colored. I will tell you why. These yellow colored columns or rows are in the money. Why in the money? Because these prices are lesser than 196. These are lesser than 196 because 196 is the current price, right? You can see here 196 is the current price of ITC, right? If you buy, if you want to have the right to buy at lesser than 196, at lesser than 196, can I tell that will become what? That will become a in the money. You are already in the money. If you want to buy from the market, you have to pay 196, but you want to buy it at a lesser cost in the future. So, let us say you are taking this option of 195. So, can I tell you, you are already in the money. How sir, see in the market if you want to buy, you need to pay 196. With this option, you will be able to buy at 195 at a future date. Already you are in the advantageous position, right? So, that position is called in the money. That position is called in the money. And let us say if you want to buy it at 200, in the market if you go you can buy it at 196 itself. In the future you want to buy it at 200, you are out of the money, you are out of the money. And if there was an option of 196 here, if there was an option of 196 here, then it would have been at the money. Which will have higher premium to be payable by the buyer in the money. If you can see. It keeps on increasing from 6, 7, 10. Here actually this is 13 and then 12. Generally you will not be able to see all this but sometimes we do see because here that is at this price. Sellers are not available. But at 185 sellers are available that is why they are charging how much? 13.15. Who is charging 13.15? Sellers. Sellers are demanding 13.15. Sellers are demanding 13.15, okay, 19, 21, 25, 31, so 167.31, 35, 3200, only one lot has been traded. Who is trading here? Call option buyer has paid 31.55 rupees per share. Call option buyer has paid 31.55 rupees per share. In that case, how much rupees will he would have been paid for 3200 shares? 31.55 into 3200. That comes to 1 lakh 960 rupees. So, 1 lakh 960 rupees call option buyer would have paid as premium to whom? As premium to the call option seller. Why? Because he is having the right to buy at 167.35. Today, the price is 196. Right? That is why he has paid huge amount of premium. 
because he is already in the added advantage. No matter what is the price, he has a right to buy at 167. So, now answer me one thing. What is the expectation of call option buyer? What did he expect here? The person who has bought this 167.35 rupees of call option, what is his expectation? The price moving up or the price coming down? What is his expectation? Will the price move up or will the price come down? Move up, superb, superb. Now, I will tell you one more thing. 167.35 is the strike price which he has exercised. Not exercised, which he has bought call option for. 167.35 he can buy. But, can I tell he has paid a premium of 31.55 already? So, his cost will not be 167.35. His cost will be 167.35 plus 31.55. So, 198.9 rupees becomes his cost. Only if the share price goes above 198.9, then only he will be having a situation of profit or else he is into loss. Are you able to understand this? Only if the share price is going above 198.9. How did I get 198.9? 167.35 plus 31.55 that gives you 198.9. So, only if it is going more than 198.9, then only can make profit or else he will end up in loss only. Done. Same way, let us try to understand from 195's point of view. You have to pay a premium of 6.15, right? You have to pay a premium of 6.15. So, 195 point, sorry, 195 plus 6.15. 201.15 so only if the share price goes above 201.15 this person will gain yeah this person will gain sir in that case why don't everyone go and buy why don't everyone go and buy 167.35 because there if the price is going above 198.9 he will start getting gain but for 195 the price has to go above 201 then is this a better option strike price the answer is no why because here you will have to pay 1,960 rupees of premium 1,960 of premium so you need to first have 1 lakh rupees with you here in 195 it is sufficient even if you have 6.15 rupees into 3200 shares only 19,680 is sufficient for you to by 195 strike price call option done now if the share prices say you are getting a you are going for a strike price of 230 your investment will be only 0.25 into 3200 investment is only 800 rupees but by chance if the share price goes above 230 by chance if it is going above 230 then your profit will be unlimited right see for everyone the profit is unlimited for this person that is for uh, where was he 200 strike price did i take 200 or did i take 195 okay i took 195 for this person if the share price is going above 201.15 he will start gaining and let us say if the share price goes to 300 rupees he will gain almost 100 rupees per share you will gain almost 100 rupees per share if the share price is going to 300 so 100 into 3200 that means 3 lakh 20 thousand rupees will be the profit for call option buyer if the share price of this person goes to 300 now 3 lakh 20 thousand who will pay call option seller call option seller will pay to call option buyer what is the maximum profit for call option buyer seller for call option seller the maximum profit is only 6.15 rupees multiply by 1 okay 3200 20000 is the maximum profit he can never make more than 20000 of profit as you are lawyer yeah. with the insurance company can insurance company tell that see now we are reimbursing you 3 lakhs of mediclaim you will have to pay us more premium no once premium is paid it is valid for one year they will never ask you more premium to be paid even though they will reimburse you 3 lakh rupees 
that is how even our options market work okay next any understanding so this is in the money because here in in the money the buyer is already having added advantage whenever these concepts of premium in the money lapse exercise you should always think from the viewpoint of buyers of call option do not think from the viewpoint of sellers of call option you will get confused this is extreme out of the money this is extreme out of the money why only the price is going above 230 after that only call option buyer will make profit that is almost very difficult right since it is very difficult even the seller is charging very less premium like how from a youth who is only 25 year old they will charge less premium same way this is a very difficult situation right that is why sellers will ask only for a very less premium but if you can see here these are the open interest what is oi oi means open interest sir so what is it if you can see here the open interest for this particular price 167.35 is only 3200 that means only one contract has been executed only one contract has been executed till now under this particular strike price of 167.35 only one contract if you see here five contracts have been executed five contracts have been executed so the closer the strike price to the actual price that is actual price is 196 right the closer is the strike price towards this 196 the higher will be the open interest if you can see here the open interest is 21 lakh 79200 21 lakh 79200 shares have been bought and sold has been executed here you have 83 lakh 29200 it will be 200 rupees i told you right 200 rupees so what is happening 83 lakh 29600 shares not contracts these are shares to find out number of contracts here or to find out number of lots you need to type 83 lakh 29600 divided by 3200 2603 contracts have been executed at the strike price of 200 at the strike price of 200 so that means so many of them are betting on this 200 buyers are betting that that is buyers of call option are betting that the share price will go above 200 buyers of call option sellers of call option are betting that the share price will remain below 200 it will not go above 200 even if it is going above 200 we have charged you the premium of 4.10 so even if the share price is going to 203 rupees still who will make profit seller of call option because 1.1 rupee of premium loss for whom buyer of call option only if the share price is going above 204.10 buyer of call option will start gaining seller of call option will start losing if the price is going to 300 rupees buyer of call option will make huge profit seller of call option will make huge loss if the price is going to 150 rupees buyer of call option the maximum loss is only 4.10 into 3200 that is maximum loss for buyer of call option is only 13120 and maximum gain for seller of call option is only 13 point 13120 so this was all about open interest in the money at the money out of the money done i hope you got the point so here you can see total number of open interest is 32 lakh sorry 3 crore 22 lakh 17600 so 3 crore 22 lakh 17600 divided by 3200 shares will give you the answer that there are 10,068 lots being traded for this ITC options right for this ITC options totally there are 10,068 lots being traded in the stock market extremely sorry uh, I am uh, having this dry face issue that is why I have been doing this even in the past lectures I just realized after I watched my own lectures that I have been uh, you know uh, touching my face a lot of times.
uh, I hope you are not getting uh, irritated by seeing all of that because I am having dry skin. So I am not willing to go to the doctor just because of this pandemic. And obviously doctors are also not willing to take any patients like this. So I just don't want to consult a doctor. Don't get worried. I am all good. My health is all good. The only issue is with the dry skin. And as you all know in Chennai, the issue or the number of cases are very rapidly increasing. Almost it has reached 1.5 lakh cases. I don't know how many more it is going to increase. Fine. Now, I hope you understood call option. So, till now we have understood call option. So, whatever is in yellow, these are in the money. Now, if you just shift to the put option side, here, if you can see, here it is in yellow, but here it is in white. And when it converts into white here, it will become yellow here. That means, for put option from 190 for, that is from this price it is all in the money till 230 right it will all be in the money and below 196 it will all be out of the money let me try to explain you this from put option point of view buyer of put option he wants to see what is the buyer of put option having he is having the right to sell buyer of put option or holder of put option see instead of confusing you with this buyer of put option is having right to sell don't use that term buyer use the term holder holder of put option is having the right to sell right to sell if he wants the right to sell at 200 rupees holder of put option wants the right to sell at 200 current market price is 196 already 4 rupees in the money Market price, if he goes to the market, he can sell only at 196. But he wants to sell at 200 in the future. That means he is under the added advantage even today, right? By choosing a strike price of 200. So, what will happen? For 200, they are charging a premium of 7.30. And for 195, they are charging a premium of only 4.40. Why? Current price is 196. He wants to sell at only 195 out of the money hence out of the money will always have lesser premium when compared to in the money options so in the money options will generally have higher premium out of the money will have a very low premium and as you go further that is if you see if you can see here here the option premium which you need to pay you want to sell it at only 134 so for that you just need to pay 0 0.05 percent paise of option premium that means 0.05 into 3200 only 160 rupees you have to pay only 160 rupees of premium but do you think the share price will come down from 200 to 100 very difficult right only the share price is coming down below 134.80 he will start gaining which is almost very difficult that is why they charge only 0 0.05 premium who is charging not the national stock exchange it is the sellers if you can see here the ask price is 0 0.30 now so now the sellers have increased their premium but buyers want to buy at 0 0.05 sir what is the least price at which we can buy only in the multiples of 0 0.05 so this was the least price you can ever find in the stock market you will never find 0 0.04 0 0.03 0 0.02 0 0.01 0 0.00 you will never find right As you increase your price, let's say if you want to sell it at 230, the market price is only 196, you want to sell it at 230 rupees. Can I tell you are in the huge in the money status? So, in the money, in that case, you will have to pay 37.10 rupees of premium. That means you are having the right to sell at 230, right to sell at 230. Current market price is only 196, already in the added advantage of 34 rupees. So, because of your, you are already in the added advantage of 34, option seller, put option seller is charging 37 rupees of premium from you. That means, 230 minus 37, 230 minus 37. So, 193 rupees, only if the share price goes below 193, after that only, so put option buyer will start earning, only if the price is going below 193. 
right now the price is 196 what will a put option sell a buyer expect put option buyer expects the share price to come down because put option buyer is having the right to sell at 230 i hope it is not getting confused i know it is little bit complicated but once i am repeating again and again it will get uh, you know it will get you will get accustomed to all this don't worry so put option buyer he is having the right to sell he is having the right to sell at 230 rupees current market price is only 196 so if he goes goes to the market he can sell only at 196 he can sell to the put option buyer or put option seller at 230 rupees he can sell who can sell put option buyer can sell the share he has the right to sell the share at 230 to whom put option seller that is why i told you instead of buyer and seller use the terms put option holder has the right to sell to put option writer at 230 now for that he has to pay a, pre pay a premium of 37.10 that means for him 230 minus 37.10 he will start try to start earn money he will earn money only after the price goes below 193 if it is staying above 193 he will not make further loss because he has already paid 37.1 into 3200 shares he has already paid 118720 of premium after this he will not pay anything from his pocket who put option buyer right so i hope you understood all these in the money at the money out of the money what is open interest what is bid price the price at which buyers are willing this is the premium buyers are willing to pay but this is the premium sellers are asking from buyers that is why this is known as ask price so whenever this is not matching contracts will not get executed but if you can see near uh, let me take yeah here so buyers are willing to pay 3.30 sellers are asking 3.50 either buyers have to increase their premium to 3.50 or sellers have to decrease their premium to 3.30 or buyers increase to 3.40 seller decreases to 3.40 then the price will get executed so unless and until the bid price and ask price are not matching your contracts will not get executed okay done so we have learned all of these things let me know if you are having any issues volume is nothing but number of contracts there is number of lots these are the number of shares these are the number of lots executed so open interest are already executed these are yet to be executed they are fighting for the prices change in open interest is every day how much it has changed so this will always be in positive because number of contracts keep on getting added every day right number of contract see it is a european contract number of options cannot come down or number of contracts cannot come down it's a european option it will set off only at the end of it will set off only at the end of which day expiry date so number of or change in options contract will never come down it will only keep on adding if you can see here okay here probably it has come down um, one second okay it can come down sorry I, I, I gave a wrong statement it can come down how I will tell you that later but as of now just don't confuse with this just assume it's a European contract people will get the right to exercise or lock lapse only at the expiry date okay so do let me know how is it all going till now I hope I've given a fair understanding to you what is all these these are the options option chain analysis it was an option chain analysis later you can also go here find call put try to change to nifty so nifty is the highest traded options if you go to nifty you can find that okay expired it for nifty for nifty you will have weekly expiries there are only two index where you will find this weekly expiries one is nifty the other one is 
bank nifty if you click here you will find weekly expiries sir what is weekly expiries this will not get only expired at the end of last thursday of every month it will ex there will be weekly expiries and it is going till 29th of october that is for 3 months you are having weekly expiries same way you can go for nifty and uh, click on this expiry date you will find that there are weekly expiries not only for till 2020 there are weekly expiries till 2023 now these are the only two index one is nifty the other one is bank nifty these are the only two index where you will find nifty, uh, weekly expiry probably nifty it let us just check not sure about it okay nifty it is no one is trading here neither uh, there is any information so nifty and nifty bank nifty and bank nifty these index these are index these are not stocks they have the expiry dates in the weekly expiry and these weekly expiries are also on the last thursday of every week if you see 13th of august will be the next thursday 20th of august will be the next thursday 27th of august this is monthly expiry date correct again you will find weekly expiry weekly expiry weekly expiry and this 24th of september is the monthly expiry date right again you will find find weekly weekly uh, i hope there is some mistake here first of october this is okay first of october 8th of october and then you are having 29th of october i don't know why in between there is no 15 and 22 we have to check that also but probably these are all every thursday of every week okay so this is how everything is getting fixed in options contract okay now if you go through this in the money at the money out of the money you will understand it more easily right you will understand it more easily till here you just go through from your side i'm giving you two minutes time just go through i hope you're having the books open we'll now start with the next concept that is the practical aspects of options in the stock market practical aspects of options in the stock market now what are these practical aspects i told you that all the options are european options that is you have the right to exercise or lapse you have the right to exercise or lapse only on the expiry date does that mean once i've bought the option will i have to wait till the expiry to square it off or can I square it off even before? Now, in your questions, this practical concept is not available. It is just for your extra understanding because of late or in the future, if you are trying to trade in you know stocks or in the options, you must know how to get out of it even before expiry, right? So, just going by your book, you will never try to understand that you can come out of this contract even before expiry because everywhere they will tell you only European contracts which can be which you have to wait till the expiry date to either exercise or lapse right now i will tell you how to square off the position exit even before the expiry see as per your book only in american options this is possible but i'll tell you practical world it is different you can exit even before the expiry even in an european option in india we only have european options we don't have american options Trader can exit from the contract at any time on or before expiry by taking opposite position. Like how we have seen already in the hedging. We take opposite position to hedge ourselves or to minimize the risk or whatever it is. Same way, if you have earlier bought the call option, to close that contract, you will sell the same call option at any time on or before expiry. See, you bought call option. Let's say by paying a premium of 4.10 rupees, you bought call option. Let us say by saying by paying a premium of 4.10 rupees, that premium increased to 10 rupees. When will a call option premium increase to 10 rupees? For example, I'll let you ex explain again with this uh, ITC option chain. Today the share price is 196. Today the share price is 196. You have, let us assume, 
you have bought this call option of 195 you have bought this call option of 195 how much is the premium you have paid you have paid a premium of 6.15 rupees you have bought this call option of 195 by paying a premium of 6.15 the next day the share price from 195 it went up to 205 it went up to 205 can i tell if it is going up to 205 you are under a huge profit now because 10 rupees is the difference between 205 to 105 and you have paid a premium of only 6.15 don't you think now people will come behind the strike price of 195 they will be willing to pay extra premium because the advantage the in the money intrinsic value itself is 10 rupees so people probably they might pay even 15 rupees now you bought this call option at 6.15 because today the value increased from 196 to 205 current market price is 196 right so from 196 it increased to 205 don't you think now everyone will be willing to give a higher premium for this 195 call option because you are having the right to buy at 195 today if you want to buy it in the market you will have to pay 205 so assume people are willing to pay 15 rupees now so what you want to do is you want to take this profit how much is your profit you paid 6.15 premium today if you sell the same call option you will receive 15 rupees of premium 15 minus 6.15 you are you are in the profit of 8.85 rupees per share 8.85 rupees per share multiplied by 3200 that means you have made a profit of you have made a profit of 28320 rupees in a single day in a single day you have made a profit of 28320 how earlier when you were buying the call option you paid a premium of 6.15 the next day it exactly increased by 10 rupees you were like wow whatever i expected the market is behaving in the same way 10 rupees increased i bought it at 9, 195 strike price by paying a premium of 6.15 today the price has become 205 so obviously the demand for 195 strike price will increase when the demand is increasing obviously people will be willing to pay more and people as of now just for our understanding they are willing to pay 15 rupees so what will i do i will sell the call option and receive 15 rupees seller of call option will obviously receive the premium right buyer of call option will pay 15 rupees seller of call option will receive 15 rupees earlier i bought at 6.15 now i want to come out of this contract i will sell the same call option same strike price same expiry date same share that is itc at 15 rupees now so what will happen 15 rupees i sold 6.15 i bought per share gain is 8.85 rupees of premium this 8.85 is premium gain premium gain of 8.85 i am satisfied with this 8.85 of premium gain i want to come out of this contract what will i do i will sell and get the profit of 28320 in a just in a single day come out of this contract and live my life happily right i am not neither borrowed about what is going to happen in the future because what i have done i have bought earlier and now sold so i am done i bought it at 6.15 i sold it at 15 rupees the same strike price same pre uh, same share one lot right so all of that should be the same so that you can come out of this contract sir my mistake instead of july expiry i sold august expiry sir my mistake what happened now i was a fresher to options instead of july instead of july stock options or instead of july call option of itc i have sold august call option in that case now you are having two contracts open one is earlier you bought at 6.15 now you sold at 15 rupees but not the same contract you sold another contract so here you are having obligation to sell here you are having right to buy so two contracts are open now so all of this happens practically you have to be very careful if you have bought july month itc 195 strike price option to close this you will have to sell july month itc 195 call option 195 strike price call option 
done so this is what happens practically and that is what i have explained here entry contract if you are buying call option sell same call option sell the same call option at any time on or before expiry so same call option means same call or put option means same underlying what is underlying yeah the underlying is itc then same expiry what is expiry expiry was let us say in our example it was august 27 right so 27th august then same strike price so how much is the strike price 190 right if you are not abiding by any of these rules and you are going for some other contract now two positions will be open one is that buy position which you made earlier now the other sell position which you have recently done done okay if you have earlier bought put option you will have to sell same put option sell you have sold call option earlier what happened you sold call option when you sold call option you received a premium of 6.15 you received a premium of 6.15 because obviously seller will receive premium and what is the seller of call option thinking no matter what the price will not go up that is what is the seller of call option thinking so the next day what happened from 195 rupees the share price came down to 190 the share price came down to 190 who has won this battle now buyer of call option or seller of call option seller of call option so can i tell this premium will decrease now sir why will it decrease why will the premium decrease think now from the buyer of call option buyer of call option he paid 6 rupees premium to buy it at 195 when the market price was 196 now the market price itself is 190 why will someone be willing to buy at 195 strike price market price itself came down to 190 why will now someone be willing to buy at 195 so the demand will come down when the demand comes down or when the this difference increases the premium automatically comes down and when the premium comes down i as the seller of call option will now buy the call option to come out of this contract i sold it received per share 6.15 premium the premium now has come down to 3 rupees I will buy at 3 rupees. I sold at 6.15. I bought at 3 rupees. My gain is 3.15 rupees of premium per share. Who am I? Seller of call option. Seller of call option. So, seller of call option 3.15 per share. That means 10,080 rupees I have received. I will get out of this contract and I will not bother anything about the contract. I hope you understood this concept as well. 6.15 etc all of these things are all good let me know if you are still having any doubts so seller of put option will have to buy the same put option to come out of this contract so even in a european call option it is not like you will have to wait until the expiry date even before expiry date if you are entering into the opposite position of the same contract you are out of the contract that is you have squared it off but to exercise or lapse the buyer will have to wait till the expiry date that is only at the end of the three months he will have the right to exercise or lapse he cannot exercise or lapse before that you are only paying with the playing with the premium right you are only playing with the premium premium increased you are selling premium decreased you are buying you are not telling that i want to exercise the right or lapse the right i hope you are getting the point so that was all about this particular concept relationship between underlying price and premium if the underlying price moves up call premium will also move up this is what i have told you recently this this uh, the entire example which i told you is all about this underlying price moves up what is underlying price itc share price itc share price moves up call premium will also move up put premium will move down so obviously whatever direction call premium moves put premium will, will move in the reverse direction will move in the reverse direction right so if it is moving down underlying price is moving down put premium will move up but call premium will move down after this lecture i recommend all of you go through this nano book once again try to understand what is happening
try to understand what is happening okay so that you get a good grip over this it is not in a single day you will be able to learn entire options it takes years for few people to learn what is option right but see if i just go by the theory book that is our bookish knowledge the knowledge which i am giving you is both bookish as well as practical i will tell you this is your practical knowledge this entire paragraph is your practical knowledge all these are there in the book out of the money in the money at the money this is this is a bookish knowledge as well as practical knowledge so i have a combination of both bookish as well as practical sir why are you explaining the practical knowledge it's not at all required for us see any day in future if you want to trade practically in futures or options you will have to understand all this because if you are just in getting interest in this and trading it like that you will lose a lot of money right so that is why i have tried to give you a little bit of practical knowledge over the bookish knowledge now let us go for the next paragraph let me know if you are having any doubts till now if you are able to understand i am all uh, open for your queries open interest we have already discussed investment required sir how much is the investment required for a buyer of option that is a call option or put option investment required is premium paid investment required is premium paid for a writer of call option that is seller of call option investment required is margin money as required by the exchange is margin money as required by the exchange obviously i have already told you seller of call option or put option will pay the entire margin money buyer of call option or put option will pay only premium sir why is he paying only premium sir isn't he having risk no he is not having more risk why if once you have paid the premium insurance premium once you have paid will they come and ask you more money of insurance no after one year only they will ask that is the same case here also once you have paid the premium that is the maximum loss you can occur right no more than premium paid you will you will never occur anything uh, more than the premium paid okay thank you so more than the premium paid you will never incur loss if you are a buyer of option but if you are a seller of option your maximum loss is unlimited that is why from a seller of call option we will charge margin money open interest what is open interest it indicates outstanding quantity of a particular future contract at particular time this we have already discussed increase in open interest what does increase in open interest mean new buyers and new sellers take entry in the contract new buyers and new sellers okay new buyers and sellers no change in open interest means when one trader exit from a contract and another trader enters into the contract this is when there will be no change in the open interest decrease in open interest when will that happen when both existing buyers and existing sellers exit from the contract this is also only for practical knowledge not there in your book but we need to understand how does the open interest change what is open interest executed contracts already executed between buyers and sellers it will increase when new new people are coming in it will decrease when existing people are going out and it will remain stable when one new person is coming and one old person is going out as simple as that so from now onwards we will start with the those concepts from where questions are possible right so from where questions are possible till now we have just created a base for call option we have just created a base now let's try to understand what is intrinsic value what is time value of money everything almost uh, what we have already learnt in futures do text me up if there is any doubt see right now solving your doubts are very easy later after the lecture if you are calling me if you are texting me it will be difficult for me for the live lectures record a lecture you can obviously text me up in whatsapp any time i'm always there for you to uh, solve your queries but i want feedback from live lectures call option put option basics are clear how to trade why premium changes what is in the money at the money out the money what is uh, uh, you know european option what is american option when will a buyer of call option gain when will a seller of call option gain 
when will a buyer of put option gain and when will a seller of put option gain that story is registered in your mind everything is all clear just let me know do not be so lazy i want replies you need to understand in the live classes we can obviously get to know what students are thinking thank you thank you all i want utmost support from all my live students recorded lectures obviously they are not able to reply me or uh, they cannot guide me instantly but live lecture students at least you can take up this responsibility to guide me throughout this fast track batch okay thank you thank you all intrinsic value what is intrinsic value normally intrinsic value means fair value normally intrinsic value means fair value but this normal meaning is applicable for valuation of securities other than options we have seen what is fair value earlier right so intrinsic value value means fair value but not in options in options intrinsic value of call is today's upside difference and intrinsic value of put is today's downside difference don't worry i have an example here for you to understand particulars example 1 example 2 market selling price 10500 nifty example 1 10300 nifty example 2 the strike price 10200 10450 intrinsic value of call is nothing but the difference between market selling price and the strike price 300 is the intrinsic value here the intrinsic value is zero how sir in the market you can buy or sell you can buy at 10300 you have opted a strike price of 10450 can i tell the strike price is out of the money the strike price is out of the money strike price because see in the market you can buy it at 10300 you want to have a strike price of to buy to have a right to buy at 10450 out of the money here you will never have any intrinsic value sorry i think uh, i okay i have explained this particular point extremely sorry sorry for the wrong information what i'll try to explain is 10500 in the market you can buy or sell strike price you have kept it at 10200 that means if you think from the call option point of view it is in the money buy in the money if you go and buy from the market you have to pay 10500 but you are buying it at just 10200 exercise price is only 10200 the strike price is also called as exercise price yeah so that means 300 is the intrinsic value for you now think from the put option point of view in the market you can sell it at 10500 you have kept a strike price of only 10200 that means you have the right to sell at only 10200 you have the right to sell at only 10200 that means you are out of the money here this is in the money this is out of the money coming back to example 2 market selling price is 10300 you have kept the exercise price of 10450 first let us understand from the call option point of view from the market you can buy it at 10300 but you don't want to buy it at 10300 you want the right to buy at 10450 sir why will someone do that why will someone do that because at 10450 since it is out of the money premium payable premium payable will be very less as you all know in out of the money contracts premium payable is very less it can also go up to 0.05 but in the money if you choose you have to pay high amount of premium even 130 rupees per share even 30 rupees per share you have seen that per share 30 rupees means for 3200 shares 120000 rupees it came and out of the money we have also seen 700 rupees of premium 
So whenever the case is out of the money, the premium payable is less. That is why you might prefer to have an out of the money option. Intrinsic value of call will be zero because out of the money. But for put option, you can sell it in the market for 10,300. You want the right to sell, you want the right to sell it at 10,450. You want the right to sell at 10,450. That means this is in the money, right? This is in the money. Hence, in the money, in, those, in these cases, the difference between market strike, market selling price and strike price is the intrinsic value. Is the intrinsic value. Guys, just give me a thumbs up if you are able to understand this intrinsic value. Come on, fast. I have told you already, you have to be active. We can't be like this, yeah. Next is time value of money. Time value of money, the difference between intrinsic value and actual premium. For example, longer period of option will have obviously more time value. Say for example, you are going for 3 months call option. We have already seen that for 3 months call option, the premium was, was high and for 2 months call option, the premium was low. Why? Because of time value of money. You can wait until 3 months. In 3 months, whatever can happen, right? But I am telling you can wait only until 15 days. After that, you have to close. In that case, the time available with you is very less. See, how I can tell you is, with a normal example or with a, just a story, I can tell you that, let us say, you are having 3 months time. Can I tell in this 3 months time, you can study so much, you can complete all the 8 papers of your final. But if I am telling you there are only 15 days, in that case time value, now only we will find that the time is having so much of value, right? Same way even an options contract or even in any derivatives, time value of money, because of time value of money, the premium changes. Higher the time available with you, higher is the premium, lower the time available with you, lower will be the premium. PVM is the difference between intrinsic value and actual premium. See, here intrinsic value, okay, once again, 10,302, uh, 200. I should have continued the same example probably. Okay, nonetheless, 10,300 is the selling price in the market. You are a call option buyer. You are a call option buyer. You want to exercise it in 10,200. Can I tell, this is in the money, if you go to the market, you can buy it at 10,300, but you want to buy it at 10,200 in the future, in the money. Can I tell, the intrinsic value is only rupees 100, <coughs> intrinsic value is only rupees 100, but the premium which you have to pay is 154, and the premium which you have to pay is 100. 54. So the extra 54 rupees is the extra 54 rupees is the time value of money, right? Because 100 is intrinsic value, 54 rupees is the time value of money. <clears throat> so you all got to know how are we calculating? How are we calculating what? How are we calculating the intrinsic value and time value of money? So to calculate premium, you have to add two things intrinsic value plus time value of money will give you what will give you your premium table so these are all bookish concepts if you apply this in the practical world it will not work i can show you that also i would recommend you also if you are very interested in options etc you can go and look at all these things it's a huge opportunity for you to make it useful that is you can earn from options if you are understanding it properly you can also lose money i'm not telling that you, you will never lose money you will be losing money but just understand now once you are becoming a little bit expert in these options you are starting to trade you can trade it from your home no matter what is the situation there is covid there is anything else you can trade it from your place for the rest of your life for so gaining knowledge which can make you earn money like anything, 
टिल यू आर डाइंग इफ यू आर एक्सपर्ट इन दिस राइट सो दैट इज अ काइंड ऑफ वैल्यू विच आई एम ट्राइंग टू एड इन योर लाइफ वंस यू हैव लर्न ऑप्शन प्रैक्टिकली यू कैन ट्रेड इन दिस till your last breath because here you just need to sit at your home have some money with you right you need to have a, a good amount of capital let us say uh, at least 1 lakh rupee so that you can enjoy the benefits of options so computation of expected value of call and put option intrinsic value of option of each probability distribution multiply by probability of occurrence will give you value of option it's a very easy formula nothing but let us say the probabilistic approach this is a probabilistic approach we are hoping that see today we want to buy it at 10200 this market price is 10300 we are just assuming that see i am buying because i feel the market price will be going up will be going up so it might go up first case 10400 probability of this is 0.35 next case 10500 probability of this is 0.40 next case 10000 it can also remain to 10300 probability of this is 0.25 so multiply these things and finally find out the average which will be known as value of option using probabilistic approach generally there are various methods to calculate value of options so you just need to wait a little bit so that i can clarify you the other method so value options but this method of computing it was probabilistic approach that is once you are computing this let us try to do this 10400 into 0.35 3640 plus 10500 into 0.4 4200 plus 10300 into 0.25 2575 i hope you have done m plus and i hope you are also calculating along with me so m plus m plus m plus now i'll do mrc to get the answer as 10415 i am assuming the average future price of nifty will be somewhere around 10415 so how much is the value of option value of option is 10415 minus this 10200 i can pay up to 215 rupees of what i can pay up to 215 rupees of premium because that is the value of this option this is my expectation i i am willing to buy at this price so 215 can be my value of option so right now if the premium is let us say only 200 rupees i will try to buy why will i buy because if premium is only 200 rupees i will be able to gain this 15 rupees right 15 rupees per share or per nifty into 75 How much does the does that come? So seventy five into fifteen. That means thousand one twenty five rupees. Because my expected price is ten thousand four one five. Expected value of option is what two hundred and fifteen. In the market, it is trading at only two hundred. So can I tell fifteen rupees? I am expecting to gain. So fifteen into seventy five. Because for Nifty seventy five is the lot. For Nifty seventy five is the lot size. Okay. Let us now understand the next part, which is also one of the more important parts to understand the basics of options. So till now we are only into basics. I can tell you in this chapter also we are having only two parts. One is understanding the basics. The other one is this part of valuation of option. So this is a more trickier part. From here only the entire chapter will start. on a full fledged note so till here it is more of only learning basics right? learning basics there are few things which are not applicable for cma so i will let you know all of that don't worry ya the course is for both ca and cma right? so no need to worry at all i will try to cover up all the concepts for ca as well as cma i'll tell you which, which are all not there generally for cma students there are few concepts which are not available in your books but available in ca books so cma for you there are few chapters which are not there for ca and for ca there are few chapters which are not there for cma 
all these things I have explained in my introduction lecture itself, right? Coming back to the factors affecting determination of valuation of options. Current market value, spot value. Call option becomes more valuable as the stock price rises and they become less valuable as the stock price decreases. So obviously a yeah, call option becomes more valuable as the stock price raising, right? All of these you have already discussed. And if the stock price decreases, call option value will decrease. On the other hand, in put option, these becomes more valuable as the stock price decreases. And it becomes less valuable as the stock price increases. So, first factor is based on current market value, our option premium will either increase or decrease based on current market value or spot value. In call option, if this if the market price increases, it will become more valuable. What does this more valuable term means? It means increase in premium. Increase in. And what does this less valuable means? It means decrease in premium. Done. Okay, so that is what all about more valuable and less valuable. It is obviously the opposite for put option. When market price decreases, it will become less valuable and when market price increases, it becomes, no, I think I, I made a wrong conclusion, sorry. Put option will become less valuable if the market price increases and it will become more valuable if the market price decreases. Right. Next is your exercise or strike price. See all of these I have somehow or the other taught you when explaining practically. Right. But now let us understand it theoretically also because these all they have given in the book also. Right. Call option becomes less valuable as the strike price increases. I told you right. If you keep call option buy value at 195 when the market price is 196 let us say if you keep at 137 we had uh, seen some 119 right in 119 call option value was 37 rupees i'm not sure exactly but okay now let us i will give you a fresh example 195 196 is the current market price if you want to buy it at 190 can i tell in the money in in the money you will have to pay higher premium that is what they have told here as the strike price increases if you increase your strike price to 200 rupees now it is out of the money if it is out of the money it will become less valuable because you will have to pay less premium right what is less valuable means you will have to pay less premium and it becomes more valuable as the strike price decreases so if you are keeping the strike price as 200, it will become less valuable. That is, you will pay only 4 rupees as premium. If you keep your strike price at 190, you will have to pay even 7 rupees of premium. All of these we have discussed. So don't tell me you are not able to understand. Okay, even if you are not able to understand, please let me know. Because live lecture students, I am expecting utmost cooperation from everyone. I don't want anyone to just sit idle and not reply me because... Only if you reply me, I will know how much is your understanding. In case of a put option, an option becomes more valuable when the strike price increases and becomes less valuable when the strike price decreases. You can correlate this because we have understood for call option exactly opposite is the put option. So, you can go through this table now for a summarized understanding. Time to expiration. This is very simple. For both call and put option, it becomes more valuable as the time to expiry increases. See, time to expiration is nothing but say you are having 3 months time. Obviously, the premium will also increase, right? Because time value of money is more in 3 months time. 
in two months time the time value of money is less in one month time the time value of money is even less so if time value of money is less premium payable is also less right so for both call and put option if the time value of money is increasing it becomes more valuable that is more premium will have to pay for increased time value of money let me show this to you practically let me just take 200 rupees and here also you can see see if the strike price increases if the strike price increases the premium decreases in call option from 7.7 .7, it is becoming what 4.1 right and in the put option as you increase the strike price the premium will also increase from 3.55 it is increasing to 7.10 for the respective strike price okay so that was regarding if the exercise price increases premium decreases for call option but premium increases for put option i have explained you that first point was if your underlying price increases what happens this can we can i can i can make you understand only if it is going live only if the market is live i can make you understand that if this is going to say 200 what will happen for uh, call option call option premium let's say for 195 will increase why because you can buy it at 195 right now the market is 200 when you bought the pr market price was only 196 but now it has increased further to 200 so obviously you are having good amount of gain right now correct so that is when premium will increase but the same opposite will happen for put option you have the right to sell at 195 this right to sell you got when the market price was 196 but now the market price has increased to 200 but still you are having the right to sell at only 195 and i hope they will understand it clear for time value of money let me just take you into this particular thing stock options of itc for 27th of august 195 strike price the premium is how much 6.15 i will just change the time value let us go to october i will just put get data okay october data is not available let us take september why is september also not available August, I'm just changing it to September. Not available. Uh, can I take Nifty here? I'll try to take Nifty because see, uh, generally uh, most of the people trade only Nifty. That is one of the most popular derivatives in Indian stock market. So here you will find lots of buyers, lots of sellers. If there are no buyers, no sellers, then only they'll show you something like this nil okay but in nifty there are lots of buyers lots of sellers i'm just clicking on index options i am going for nifty not bank nifty expiry date see i will first make you understand from 13th of august point of view strike price okay why is it not coming I will have to change it here. I will again type nifty, nifty 50. Here, index options for 27th of August, 11,200 strike price. I will get the date of premium. 220 rupees is the premium you have to pay. If you are a buyer of call option or if you are a buyer of put option, See here I have told call but if it is put and same 11,200 I am choosing here the premium will differ. So for call option the premium is 220 let us see for put option the premium is only 191 right. Now again I will go to the call option select the same 11,200 220 is the premium payable right I will just change the date from 27th of august let us go to 24th of september which is the next month you will find weekly expiries i have already told you for nifty and nifty bank nifty you will have weekly expiries also but apart from these two things for everything in the stock market you will only find monthly expiry and maximum only up to three months 
but only for nifty and bank nifty you will find weekly expiries and in nifty if you can see the dates are going even till 2023 right so in nifty it is different as of now let us go for the two months nifty call option for one month nifty call option i, do, I need to pay 220 for two month nifty call option for the same 11200 strike price for the same 11200 strike price get data you can see here it is 354 so how much is the time value of money added 134.75 that is because of time value of money sir how much is the intrinsic value here intrinsic value is strike price minus the current nifty 11214 and 11200 so intrinsic value is only 14 rupees rest of everything is time value of money right rest of everything is time value of money next is by risk free rate of return how will our premium change if there if the risk free rate of return is high can i tell for tvm that is time value of money how do we bring future value to present value by discounting it with the risk free rate of interest what is discounting 1 divided by 1 plus r power n if you do this you will be able to bring future value to present value if this r is high if the r is high that means there is lot of time value of money if higher the time value of money higher is the call option premium okay see basically this thing is not much practical i cannot explain you exactly the practical relevance but just understand it's not going to be asked in the examination regarding all this just understand this point alone higher the risk free rate of interest higher is the call option premium but lower is put option premium lower of risk free rate of interest higher lower call option premium higher put option premium this is the only case where practical understanding is not possible you just need to understand this particular point number four apart from this i have never compromised on any practical aspect right volatility obviously higher the volatility higher the premium payable right and lower the volatility lower will be the premium payable as simple as that what is volatility volatility means this is the line let us say nifty right now is at 11200 right now because of coronavirus if you see every day nifty increases by say 100 150 points every day decreases by 100 150 points so huge volatility because of pandemic because of the coronavirus and if the if the volatility is huge the seller is also at huge risk right seller is also at huge risk that is why he will charge higher option premium you will charge what higher option premium higher volatility increases the risk of an option writer that is what i told who is an option writer option writer is call call option seller or put option seller they are the writers done so for them the risk increases right that is why they will charge what more premium if there is more volatility volatility Sixth point is dividend and the last point don't worry. In case dividends are receivable before the due date of options, then the current market price is come dividend market price. See all of this we have already also discussed in futures. Dividends are receivable before due date, then it is come current market price, is come dividend market price. Further the exercise price is determined taking into consideration the current market price which after the record date will become X dividend and hence reduce the future market value. when we are buying options what is happening dividend is expected dividend is expected so can i tell if there is dividend expected the price becomes come dividend come dividend price and as a buyer of option as either a buyer of call option or a seller of put option sir you told buyer of call option and you told seller of put option why sir you didn't tell buyer of put option. A buyer of put option is having the right to sell. He is having the right to sell. He is not having the right to buy. 
if you remember this particular paragraph you will understand it more clear understand this call option buyer has the right to buy has the right to buy correct put option seller put option seller has the obligation to buy 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 he has the right to buy he has the obligation to buy same way put option buyer has the right to sell call option seller has the obligation to sell now dividend is received only to those people who are buying shares right is dividend received to those people who are selling shares no only people who are holding shares they will only receive dividend so can i tell if he is buying call option or this person is selling a put option they will not receive dividend they will not receive what dividend why they will not receive dividend because they are not shareholders they are gamblers they will never receive dividend but right now the price has come dividend so that is why if the price has come dividend call option buyer will be willing to pay lesser amount now i think i have uh, i need to go through that i think i have told you the wrong explanation See, till now the explanation was all right that buyer buyer etc was all good the only the last point if you can see here further the exercise price is determined taking into account the current mps based on current MP mps that is current market price is 196 based on that only we are ready to pay premium which after the record date will become ex dividend so 196 let us assume after the record date 6 rupees of dividend was given it came down to 190 it came down to 190 so if it is going to come down like this who is going to be benefited i will tell you earlier i i am a buyer of call option i bought it at 195 i bought it at 195 now the price is 190 only so who is at disadvantage buyer of call option is at disadvantage so whenever there is expected dividend buyer of call option instead of paying 4 rupees premium for this he will not be willing to pay 4 rupees he will be willing to pay only 1 rupee why because obviously after dividend this will become 190 and it's a very disadvantageous position for whom for the buyer of call option and seller of put option but it is an advantageous position for whom buyer of put option and seller of call option but do not confuse so much yeah i know you are getting confused listen to me carefully again buyer of call option i will only explain from buyer of call option rest of the things will get automatically into uh, your mind don't worry buyer of call option today the price is 196 of itc itc is declaring dividend so can i tell it is come dividend price of 196 it has declared a dividend of 6 rupees so once x date reaches or once record date reaches this price will come down to 190 this i have already explained you with the help of futures if this price is coming to 190 can i tell i earlier i was planning to buy it at 195 I will make a loss of 5 rupees which I already know. I already know this price will come down to 190. This will come down to 190. Hence, I will make a loss here. So, what I will do now? I will go and tell to the seller of call option. A hey, seller of call option. Right now, you are demanding 4 rupees of premium. I am not willing to pay 4 rupees of premium. You will ask us why? Because there is dividend receivable. So, if dividend is paid, this price will come down to 190. I will not pay you 4 rupees dividend. If you want to get this contract done, I will only pay you say 1 rupee. Yeah, I will only pay you 1 rupee. Because I think only that is the worth. Or I will only pay you 0 0.25 rupees. Okay, because 195, 190. This is an out of the money call option, right? Do you think for out of the money call option, you, will, you are paying 0? Or you will pay at least something? See, even here, even in our example, I hope you are getting the option chain. Yeah. These were all out of the money call option for 200 rupees. The buyer is still willing to pay 
4.1 rupee. Even for out of the call option, they are willing to pay premium of 4 rupees, right? That is the same case what I am explaining you here. 195 and it goes down to 190 out of the money call option. Earlier I used to pay say 4 rupees. Now I will pay only 1 rupee. Or earlier I used to pay 14 rupees. Now I will pay only 4 rupees. Why? Because after dividend the price will come down. So that is what the dividends will have effect on the premium. We have seen 6 factors which will have effect on premium payable. We have seen 6 factors which will have effect on the premium payable. That is what we have learnt now. What are those 6 factors? One is because of dividend premium payable might change. Next is because of volatility premium payable might change. Because of risk free rate of interest premium payable might change. Because of time to expiration premium payable might change. Higher the time value higher the premium. Because of exercise price premium value might change and because of current market value or spot value premium payable might change. So these are the six factors affecting determination of valuation of option. These are the six factors affecting what determination of valuation of option. The same thing I have again explained you here. What happens if increases in call premium, if decreases in call premium. Likewise, you can just understand this entire thing. So the explanation for all of these things I have just now given you with the help of all these six factors. And here it is just a summary. It is just the summary. It is not required for you to memorize all this. Just try to understand the logics. When will the premium move upwards? When will the premium move downwards? That is it. If you have understood call and, op call and put options practically, the logics also you can definitely think even in the examination hall. But you just need to know that there are six factors which are affecting the valuation of options. Okay. Done. Till now, if everything is clear, can I move to the next concept payoff? Now I think I will not be having much of struggle because my struggle is done. Now it will be your struggle because you have to work out the questions. You have to work out the questions. Okay. Let us go for the next one payoff. Payoff is nothing but expected gain that the option buyer either call or put option. So, I have used only option buyer, not option seller. Expected gain shall be making if the price of the underlying moves in the direction as expected by the option buyer. Payoff shall not be negative as the option buyer will not exercise the option if his payoff becomes negative. Hence, payoff shall be zero at the least. Payoff shall be zero at the least. We will understand this payoff with the help of a question, don't worry. First, let me just go through the strategies of option. There are four basic strategies. In CA book, earlier we used to have lots of other strategies. For example, I don't know if you have gone through a regular lecture before, there you would have learned all these long straddle strategy, long strangle strategy, spreads beer spread or bear spread long butterfly you know there's a strategy called butterfly also so now these are all eliminated from the new syllabus of ca it used to be relevant under old syllabus in the new ICA book they have not kept this for cma syllabus these are still there now once you have understood the basics of options all these things will automatically be understood no issues at all it's these are very simple for example First, let me make you understand the four basic strategies. Buying call option, selling call option, then buying put option, selling put option. That is it. These are the four basic strategies in option. Let me first make you understand what will happen if you are buying call option. What is your expectation? Sir, my expectation to buy call option is that the price will go up. Yes, price will go up. Strategy. It is a right. 
it is a right but not an obligation to buy an underlying asset at a predetermined strike price. Let us say predetermined strike price was 195, underlying asset was ITC, underlying asset was ITC and uh, once again, okay, done, underlying asset was ITC, right, you are getting a, you are buying a call option. So, cost of the strategy will be what? The premium paid is the cost of strategy. Let us say we have paid how much? Say 7 rupees of premium. You have paid 7 rupees of premium. Why? Because it is in the money option. And I can show you practically also it was 7 rupees only. For 195, okay, it was 6.15. Okay. Five, and we will take 6.15. The exact practical example. 6.15 is the cost of this strategy. Break even point. What is break even point? At what price will I have no profit, no loss situation? Right now, my strike price, I can buy it at 195, but I have already paid a premium of 6.15. So, add 6.15 only if the price goes above, only if the price goes above 195 plus 6.15, that is only if the price goes above 201.15. After this only, I will start to gain. Yeah, above this only, I will start to gain. Below this, I will lose. I will lose what? I will lose this premium paid. I will lose this premium paid. If the price is exactly 201.15, it is a no profit, no loss case. Correct? Because I, I have the option to buy at 195, but I have already paid premium of 6.15. So, my cost has become 195 plus 6.15, 201.15. Okay, so I bought it at 215, uh, I bought it at 195, so plus premium, that is my cost is 201.15 along with premium. Sorry. So that is how we calculate what break even point. Maximum gain is unlimited because if it is say going to 300 rupees, how much will be my profit? 300 minus 201.15. Because 201.15 is my total cost, right? Along with premium. Break even point is 201.15. 300 minus 201.15. The uh, profit can be 98.85 rupees per share multiplied by 3200, 3 lakh rupees profit. What if the share price goes to 500? Okay. Now, maximum loss, maximum loss is amount option premium paid. The 6.15 into 3200 that is coming to 19,680 is my maximum loss, as simple as that. Because if the price is coming down, let's say to 150, I will lapse. I will not exercise, yeah. I will not exercise at all. Why will I buy it at 195? If I can buy from the market at 150 after 3 months. So, this was understanding long call option. Now, let us understand short call option. It is just the opposite of long call option. This is the diagram. Graph, graphical representation. I will just show you. X axis is the share price. So, let us understand this is the share price of 190. Okay, if the share price reaches say 150, my loss, this is my loss of 6.15 only. If the share price starts increasing, 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 here this is the break even point. At this break even point, the price should have been 201.15. Here I will have zero loss, neither profit, no loss. At this area at this area my loss will start decreasing that is say if the price is going to 198 my loss will decrease it will become only minus 3.15 if the share price goes to 250 if the share price goes to 250 i will have now a profit of 48.85 rupees per share done I hope you are able to understand this particular concept or this graph.
graph also they have asked one or two times in the examination so do go through the graph also do not compromise on this let us now try to understand short call option just the opposite of long call price of understanding will go down as the expectation strategy it's an obligation to sell why is it is an obligation to sell because if the call option buyer exercises his right to buy exercises his right to buy he wants to buy now who has to sell to him if the call option buyer has to buy who will have to sell to him it is the call option seller that is why they have told they have told that it is an obligation to sell to the call option buyer an underlying asset at a predetermined price strike price cost of strategy no cost why no cost because he will only receive what premium you might tell that sir margin money what about margin money margin money we need to deposit no sir see cost means you have to pay and you will not receive it back that is the cost margin money is a deposit money it's not a cost it's just a deposit so that you cannot run away if you are making loss so deposit money cannot be treated as cost of strategy right what happens if you are earning or your or your expectation is going right call option seller in that case you will receive back the entire deposit money you will again get all the deposit money which you have deposited hence that is why we will not consider margin money as the deposit money break even point strike price equals option premium received right so that is your break even point sorry minus this is minus okay so there we had strike price price plus option premium paid here we will have break even point as strike price minus option premium received maximum gain limited to premium received maximum loss unlimited let us try to understand with this diagram this is 195 i got a premium of 6.15 that is a gain for me the price came down to 150 he will not exercise itself right so still the same premium i have received it already my gain will not increase neither decrease here this is the point of 201.15 at this point it is a break even break sorry it's a break even point if the share price keeps on increasing till 250 here this will go to a loss of minus 48.85 I hope you are able to understand this now with logics, with the storybook, with my explanation. All of these have become very easy for you to understand. If still there is any issue, just let me know. I will try to solve it. I will try to sort it out. Do let me know. Do text me up in the group. So, this was from the viewpoint of call option seller. Next, let us try to understand what okay you can just read through this i hope you are getting some motivation my code i shall fail 100 times till i won't call myself a failure see failure is different failing in exam is different you are called to be a failure when you are worth doing nothing in the future then only you'll call yourself as a failure right failing is not equivalent to a failure you need to understand that Next is your long put option. Long put option. So, purpose or expectation that the underlying price will go down. Correct? That is the expectation here. Next, strategy. Right but not an obligation to sell. The same thing. Yeah, I hope you all now are accustomed to this. Cost of strategy is put option premium paid. Break even point is strike price minus option premium paid maximum gain is unlimited maximum loss is option premium paid just the opposite of call option buyer is the put option buyer let us say this is the point that is which he has paid how many rupees did he pay let me take a put option uh, example the same example 
right now the price is 195 he wants to sell it at 190 right now the price is 196 he wants to sell it at 195 that means out of the money out of the money premium will be less how much is the premium only 4.40 only 4.40 is the premium at 195 here if you see it was 6.15 why because that was in the money and here it is out of the money though it is very near to the current market price that is why you will not find much of the difference let us say uh, a price like say 210 only 1.5 you will pay in the call option buy if you buy call option but here you will pay 14.60 rupees so the more you are away from the current market price the higher will be the difference of premium or let us say you are going to 180 here you will have to pay 18.1 rupees but here you will pay only you will pay only 0 0.70 rupees so you can understand the away the more the away you are from the current market price the higher will be the difference between call option premium and put option premium because here it is huge out of the money and here it is huge in the money right let me explain you with the help of this 195 example itself at 195 you will have to, have to pay 4.40 as premium this is minus 4.40 minus 4.40 when the price is how much when the price is 190 195 and 196 are both same yeah so this should be 196 but for your easy understanding i'm just keeping it as 195 as the price increases 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 it went to 250 why will you sell it at 195 when in the market you can sell it at 250 you will not sell you will not exercise you will lapse that option you are who you are the buyer of put option you will now lapse this option of 250 okay so lapse hence your highest loss is only minus 4.40 if the price is decreasing decreasing it came down to let us say 190 195 minus 4.40 how much is that 6 190.60 at 190.60 you will have zero that is no profit no loss it came down further it came 180 now at 180 your profit will be this much that is your profit will become 10 rupee 60 paise if it comes down to 100 rupees then your profit will become uh, 90.60 so it, it can keep on increasing right it can keep on increasing but here what will happen now if it is reaching zero your maximum profit is also limited only because if it is reaching zero it cannot go in negative share price will never go in negative so here your maximum profit is only 1.190.60 but in your book they have always mentioned that they have always mentioned that maximum gain is unlimited but this is wrong maximum gain is only 190.60 in this case per share so per share 190.60 means for 3200 shares 6 lakh 9000 is the maximum gain you can make but it will never be shown in your books i am telling you practically now i hope you can understand even for put option sellers right put option sellers is just the opposite of what we have learned till now put option seller his expectation price will go up strategy obligation to buy cost of strategy put option premium received yeah he is receiving only he is not paying anything break even strike price plus option premium received for call option seller this was minus option premium received but here it will become plus why sir plus let me try to explain you this also at 195 you have made a profit of 4.40 if it is going up 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 say let us it, uh, let us assume it goes to 250 still your gain will only be 4.40 now it has started to come down come down come down here it is 190.60 so now what did i tell here break even when are you at a no profit no loss situation strike price is 195 
I think did I make any mistake here? Okay, this particular point right now, I'll just think about it because uh, my, uh, my mind is not free. I'm not free, so, so I'll just think about that and I'll try to explain you in the next lecture. This is right only, but somehow down the line, I am not able to get that story to explain you. That is the only thing. Maximum gain is limited to premium received and maximum loss is unlimited. If anyone is able to get this point, let me know. This point. Break even point will be strike price is 195 plus the option premium received of 199. 199.40, right? So, if it is reaching to 199.40, yeah. So, if it is reaching 199.40, he is having the okay, he will lapse. Okay, I will try to think about this particular point and let you know. Only this pointing is point is pending, okay. So, do not worry, definitely I will come up with the answer. Because right now I am not able to work it out in my mind, that is the only reason. It is not like I do not know about it. Okay, so I will just try to explain this point alone in the next lecture, right, so not an issue. Now options Greek, for CMA final students option Greeks are not relevant, only this delta is that, this delta is nothing but, okay one second I will just see how many more portions is there, option Greek is the last point, okay, okay, for CMA syllabus only the delta has been explained to you, rest of the uh, things they have not explained, so option Greek. Now this is very simple, questions are not there much from this, questions are not there at all, only from this delta there is one question in your book. What is delta? It measures the change in option price when stock price moves. So let us say if, if price moves by 5 rupees from 195, it came down to 190, how much is the change in option premium tomorrow when the markets are live? Tomorrow when the markets are live, this 195, right now you paid how much? 6.15, right? Let us assume when the markets opened, this 6.15, that is uh, for 195, it became 200. The price became 200. If the price becomes 200, who is earning? It is call option buyer. Why? Because he has the right to buy at 195. In markets, they are buying at 200. So, this is becoming more in the money, right? Right now, it is at the money. Tomorrow, when the price is increased to 200, it worked exactly as he expected. Who expected this? Call option buyer. So, when it went up to 200, his premium will increase, correct? It, his premium will increase. Let us say from 6.15, it increased to, it increased to, let us say, 10 rupees. In that case, 5 rupees is the unit change in price of underlying asset and the change in option price was how much? 10 minus 6.15, 10 minus 6.15, 3.85, so 3.85. So, delta is nothing but 3.85 divided by 5, 0.77. So, that means if my share price changes by 1 rupee, premium changes by rupees 0.77. This is very high, generally premium does not change so much. But okay, just for our example sake, or let us take, let us take it became 8 rupees. So, 8 rupees means 1.85 is the difference divided by 5. That means if, if share price changes by 1 rupee, premium changes by rupees 0.37. If share price changes by 1 rupee, premium changes by rupees 0.37. This is delta. Now, CMA students, if you want, you can close this lecture. Because after this, uh, it is not there in your book, but obviously yeah, for extra knowledge, you can obviously uh, be staying be staying there in this lecture. So that any day if CMA final examiners want to test you from rest of the things, they might. Generally, this is just for theory sake, uh, questions is not framed from this part. That is from Greeks, option Greeks, because this was invented by Greek people. They call it as option Greeks. And these are just five formulas, nothing much than that. So, change of a call is positive since he expects the change upwards, change of a put is negative since he expects the 
इन डाउनवर्ड्स डेल्टा रेशियो इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज हेज रेशियो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस फॉर्मुला वी विल ऑल्सो यूज इट इन वन मोर चैप्टर पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट इट रिप्रेजेंट द नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स टू बी बॉट टू कवर दी शॉर्ट कॉल पोजिशन एंड नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स टू बी सोल्ड टू कवर दी शॉर्ट पुट पोजिशन डोंट वरी अबाउट ऑल दिस नॉट टेस्टेड एट ऑल यू जस्ट नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फॉर्मुला एंड आई ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन यू वॉट इज दिस फॉर्मुला फॉर वन रुपी चेंज इन दी शेयर प्राइस हाउ मच विल बी द चेंज इन माई ऑप्शन प्रीमियम that is all about delta don't confuse much gamma is nothing but change in option delta so how much okay i'll come back to this gamma later first let me come to theta now delta d means change in change in premium divided by change in price right as simple as that theta for t what does t denotes means it it denotes change in premium see the change in premium will be constant divided by change in time t for time next v for volatility v for volatility it means change in premium the same thing change in premium divided by change in volatility next r for risk free rate of interest r for risk free rate of interest. that is rho vega delta theta gamma and delta okay so delta gamma theta vega and rho rho means change in premium divided by change in risk free rate of interest r done so rho is nothing but change in premium divided by change in risk free rate of interest vega means change in premium divided by change in volatility theta means change in premium divided by change in time gamma means change in delta not premium change in delta divided by change in price so gamma is the only different kind of a greek where we are not taking change in premium in the numerator rest of all the things we are taking change in premium change in premium change in premium and change in premium and denominator is very simple r for risk free rate of interest v for volatility t for time here we cannot keep for 1 and 2 okay so for 2 change in delta divided by change in price for 1 change in premium divided by change in price so these were the five formulas you just need to understand them try to just remember them it's it, it denotes nothing but how much will my premium change when each and every factors which is determining what premium changes so there are six factors determining the change in premium so when these factors change by 1 rupee how much will my premium change if these factors change by 1 percentage how much percentage will my premium change that is all about option greeks right only one question is there in our study mat uh, so i hope you got clarity now i'm going to conclude the session give me a thumbs up if everything is clear for today options we have completed so much of portions now the only focus is will be on completing this valuation of option once this valuation of options is done options will be coming to an end but this is a huge portions we need to complete this i'm planning two sessions for valuations of options itself okay so let's try to complete futures and options probably it will try i'll i'll be taking around three sessions more right now we have completed three sessions right and again three more sessions we had planned for five sessions but it might turn out to be six sessions right it might turn out to be six sessions so any doubts do let me know fast text me up yeah text me up in the group is everything clear okay all good okay fine so thank you guys i'll meet you in the next lecture until then take care bye bye